Yo what up guys I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Sobelist channel and today I'm going to be reviewing the PG4 by Nike. So this is Paul George's fourth signature shoe with Nike. So this shoe is going for $110 on Nike right now and the Gatorade colorway is going for $120. So they basically kept it the same price as last year's model and if you guys do want to cop I'll leave a link in the description box. But let's get it started off with the traction. So for the traction, they kept it pretty similar to the PG3, but switch it up just a little bit. You still have circles for the outsole pattern, but you have more circles inside of the circle. And as far as just the durability, durability doesn't seem very good to me, especially these, these equal size and also these nub patterns inside these circles don't seem durable, you know, super soft. So outdoor use is not recommended. And even on indoor use, I do have a little bit of fraying or actually a good amount of fraying. Durability doesn't seem good, you know, classic Nike nowadays. They're making really soft rubber. As far as on the clean court, how is that stop? The stop is really, really, nice there's a nice little squeak to it as well but on dust dust was not i mean it was okay you know it did pick up dust and occasionally i did have to wipe it didn't pick it up super fast but wiping it off is kind of a chore so once dust got stuck on the outsole it was i'd have to wipe a couple of times to get all the dust off and then i would have a few good stops so uh, if you're playing on a dusty court, just expect to wipe. Not not a lot, but like I said, it's a pretty hard wipe. But nonetheless, it's still pretty good. I wasn't sliding out like crazy. If there was dust, it was just a little bit of a slide. You know, the stop just wasn't as good and it was never really dangerous. And overall, the performance of the traction is really good. Just uh, watch out for durability. I guess it does pick up a little bit of dust. All right, moving on to the heel to toe transition. Heel to toe transition is really smooth on this shoe. You have a very nice heel compression, pretty curved shape here in the heel, a curved shape here in the forefoot and a nice flex in the forefoot as well. So heel to toe transition is very smooth. All right, moving on to my favorite part about this shoe and that is the cushion. So for the foam, it doesn't really say what the foam is, but this foam is really soft. It feels pretty similar to the PG3 cushion, but maybe a little bit softer. There's a lot of compression in the heel and also the forefoot. It provides very good impact protection. Just a slight bit of bounce. It's more on the soft side, not the springy, fast rebound type of cushion. It's more soft. Court feel was really good. And they put an entire full length air strobo unit inside of this shoe. And, you know, I was a little uh, disappointed when I first found out what it was, you know, because Nike Air, you know, we felt it in the Jordan 11. And it's it's okay. It definitely didn't feel as nice as you know full length zoom setups in those shoes. But the air strobo unit is basically just right underneath your foot, and it's incredible. It just brings the comfort level of this shoe to like maximum. You know, like for example in the KD12 and like the full length zoom strobo units, they feel really nice and bouncy. But that tension and that that I guess that pressure that's always put on your foot can get a little uncomfortable after like a long period of you know standing in it. But this air strobo unit, it's it's a nice soft compression, and obviously it's not as bouncy as Zoom is. But uh, it just it's just a nice soft cushion setup, and coupled with the soft foam, it feels like this is probably one of the most comfortable cushion setups that I've ever put on my foot and I love it it's the it's so the sexy time for your feet and I, I feel like some people will disagree with this and I feel like some people will get mad that I'm saying this but in my opinion I like the air strobo unit more than the zoom strobo unit and also you don't feel like super slow or anything you know there's just the right amount of compression this air strobo unit probably isn't super thick I'm guessing around seven to eight millimeters thick and the cushion also isn't like super mushy and soft it's just the right amount of cushion for me in my opinion so this has it, this is by far my favorite cushion setup probably of all time I like that's how much I like this so yeah there it is that's the cushion setup for the PG4 all right moving on to the materials the materials is where I, I don't like too much I mean it gets the job done I'll, I'll give it that you have a mesh shroud over the entire shoe and then on the medial side you have an even 
more aired out mesh and then underlaying everything you have more of like a textile material i would say on foot it feels good you know it's soft it's thin it's well ventilated and conforms to your foot really well so for the most part it gets the job done you know just for performance but as far as quality goes and looking at it it looks cheap in my opinion but you know they kept the price the same so uh you can't really complain about that so you can either wear this shoe unzipped or zipped and you can do either you know uh, like the zipper like it feels like you have a little bit more containment you can feel this material on top of your foot when it's zipped up and when it's not zipped up you know you feel a little bit less contained but you know you can definitely play with this unzipped and PG was playing with this unzipped so if PG was playing with it unzipped then you can definitely play with it unzipped so it's more of an aesthetic choice and I feel like unzipped looks a little bit better in my opinion and if you want to play with it unzipped you have to take the laces out of this last eyelet and then tighten the shoes inside of the shroud and if you do want to zip it up you know you just tighten the laces here which it's kind of annoying to lace up because the shroud does cover most of the laces especially the laces toward the toe area but once you tighten it you know you zip it up and then you tighten the laces over this shroud and then it kind of goes over the zipper so it kind of keeps the zipper in place as well which is kind of cool and then here in the back you have a good amount of padding which feels really nice it's pretty easy to put on because it is a one booty upper so this tongue is attached to this material and then you have a shroud all right moving on to the fit so i went true to size with this shoe and it fits pretty short so my my toe is literally like right here and it's pretty uncomfortable. Like I always say, I like to have my shoes really snug when I'm playing ball. But I feel like this is a little too much. So uh, I would suggest going up half a size. If you don't mind that, and if you don't mind your toe being like right there, then go true to size. But for most people, I would suggest going off half a size. And for the width, I would say it runs kind of narrow. And then in the toe area, it's really snug as well. If you're a wide footer, probably go up a full size or maybe even a full size and a half. And if you are worried about, you know, the shoe being a little too snug, this material does stretch out a little bit. Or actually a good amount so you should be fine if it's a little snug at first all right moving on to support and lockdown so for lateral containment i didn't really have any issues you do have an internal tpu heel counter and then you have this fuse material here on the lateral side which is kind of weird but they obviously had to add that because this mesh material really isn't supportive and then for lateral stability uh, a lot of people were saying you know this shoe might not be laterally stable because it doesn't have an outrigger which is true but, but you know it does protrude out a little bit and also the cushion is low to the ground and it's a flat base. So I, I really didn't have any issues with, you know, this type of movement. I didn't feel like I, I was going to roll my ankle or anything. So, you know, to me, I was laterally stable. So support in lockdown seems good. And obviously it is a low cut shoe. So you're not going to get any ankle support or anything. As far as the weight goes, the shoe is 12.63 ounces. The average weight of my shoes is around 12.5 ounces. So that's, that's basically average. And then let's try the right pair. Oh, 12.1. What? 12.13. Okay, why is there such a big difference? 12.13 versus 12.63? 0. 0.5 ounce difference? That's, that's pretty insane. That's kind of normal. You know, usually we do see a difference in weight between the left and right shoe. But 0. 0.5 ounces is a pretty big difference. I think it's usually around 0. 0.3 to 0. 0.4 ounces. But, you know, I, I guess that's just how it is. As far as weight goes, it feels pretty light on foot you know the materials are very minimal it's very light and the cushion and also on on the bottom of your foot it doesn't really feel like bulky or anything so overall it feels really light it feels very responsive as well and the traction is good support is good and all that so i felt really fast and light on my feet when i was playing with the shoe and then moving on to ventilation ventilation was really good you know it's a very very airy mesh yeah and then when you blow into it you can kind of feel airflow so uh, ventilation is actually pretty good and then moving on to step in comfort you know just casually walking around in the shoe like i said this has to be one of the most comfortable shoes that you can get right now just for basketball. This cushion setup is incredible. You can walk around all day in it. And the materials feel feel pretty comfortable on foot as well. So uh, very good for casual use. Moving on to durability. Durability, I think, is going to be an issue. The outsole doesn't seem very durable, you know, with the really soft rubber. The cushion also doesn't seem like it's going to be very durable. Like the air sole unit, I don't think it's going to be an issue. But this foam, I feel like will bottom out pretty quickly. And then this mesh material, mesh isn't very durable. And also didn't really include any type of fuse in the toe area. So if you do a lot of toe drives, you should watch out for that. Alright, moving on to the aesthetics. Aesthetics, it's growing on me a little bit. You can Nike ID this and I made some pretty cool colorways and I really like that plaid colorway that's, that came out. I still don't really like the overall design from an aesthetic standpoint, you know, but it definitely did grow on me. Like at first, I really didn't like it. 
Uh, tell us your thoughts on the aesthetics of the PG4 down in the comment section below. So wrapping things up, PG4, I mean, they Paul George and, and, and the designer just killed it in this shoe as far as performance goes. I love it. Everything about this shoe is incredible. The only thing I kind of didn't like is the traction on dust, but that also wasn't like super horrible. It's probably one of my favorite shoes right now to, to play in this shoe is definitely going to be in a lot of lists and it's going to be in my bag for a long time so pg4 110 bucks 100 recommended i love this shoe and i feel like i can recommend it to like most people you know if you're a big man if you want a comfortable shoe it should be a pretty solid option like i said uh support doesn't seem like it's going to be best if you're a little bit heavier but i, I feel like it'll be adequate enough and if you're just like a quick guard, this shoe is going to be really nice. So yeah, again, if you guys do want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box. So yeah, that's my review. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next one.